I want to use this arc to learn about the WAV format or WAV format, uh, the .wav files. Uh, I want to be able to read and write these kinds of files to generate music and sounds in the future. So I think a good place to start is to just learn the format, and that's what we're going to do in this arc. It makes it a little different from what I've done previously, which were sort of intensely building focused arcs. I was focused on building a thing that I already had the blueprint for in my head. This time we're starting from a very different perspective, which is I need to learn something that I don't understand well enough to do a good job at yet. And that's going to mean that I'm going to approach things quite differently in this arc. With a learning arc, the idea I have in mind is to focus on digesting the new information that I'm missing that will actually let me build a better version of the system later on. So I'm not really going to try to think about what's the best way to build it. Should I interleave things this way or that way? Should I use these data transforms or those data transforms? I'm not thinking about the design. I'm also not going to think about the organization of the code as much as I would in a sort of final pass to get something ready to, as the, make it, to make it the best production ready version of the code that I can. I'm only interested in digesting that new information about how the format works and what I need to do to actually fully comprehend its features and capabilities and those kinds of things. In the first two arcs, I used a very rigid to-do list to structure out what I was going to do. And that was easy to do in those cases because I already knew what I wanted to build. I'd already designed it in my head ahead of time. It was just a matter of building them out. And the to-do list gave me a ordered way of smoothly getting through everything I wanted. For learning, though, I'm going to need a lot more flexibility. I can't just predict what things I'm going to need to study more of and experiment with more. So instead, I'm just going to look at this arc as having a fixed amount of time in which I can get as much information in my head about how things work as possible. And I'm going to chase down the things that I need to chase down as they come up rather than planning ahead on what I'm going to discover. I think to get started, the only thing I can really do that makes sense is to track down a good spec for the WAV format and give it a read through, get the basics in my head, and save that for spec for referring back to later as we start actually writing code to explore it. So I'm going to go do that. This is the web page I ended up finding that I'm going to use to get myself started. It's not really a spec, it's a description of the spec, but it's in pretty good detail. So it's a good place to get started. It also has links to more detailed specs. So I've gone ahead and saved all of that so that if I need to keep digging, I will be able to. From my first read through of the top level ideas, I have some notes which I'm putting on the screen here. This is just stuff that I noticed was important to me, things I wanted to think about more later. It's not necessarily in any particular order, except that it's the order I discovered these things in, in as I was writing them into my notebook. So I have some idea from this overview of what the top level structure of these files is gonna look like. There's this riff header and this riff chunk thing. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and switch over to writing a little bit of code to extract that from a WAV file now.
Okay, with that, I'm getting these chunks out of a sample wave file. So that means I'm doing roughly the correct thing at the very least. And that's a good place to get to. I have this code organized out into two main parts. There's these format types, which are types that are actually defined by the format we're parsing. So like the header is basically of the different chunks in this case. And then there's the parser code, which is types I get to make up myself. I can rearrange these types, use pointers in these types, things you couldn't do in a file format, uh, so that I can put them into the parser interface and not have to do everything through the format types, which might not always be phrased in the most user-friendly way. So that's a good way, I think, to split out things that I can manipulate without causing bugs and things that I have to keep the way they are because they're defined by the format. I want to wrap up now by going over the implementation code and making sure that it's just a little bit tidied up. Essentially the way I think about this is anytime I get something working, I had to learn a little bit about how the system works that I'm learning about or dealing with. And I didn't necessarily take the time when I was first learning about it to make sure that my code would be easy for me to use in the future to recall those things, right? I was just trying to learn them and now I've done that. So in the future, I might not recall all the details that I got right on my first pass. And since I don't won't recall them, I need something that's sort of my notes, my reminder of how it works. And the easiest thing I can think of to do that is to make the code super crystal clear about what's happening by untangling things, making sure there aren't lots of overly complex structures in the implementation uh, so that it can just be a nice easy way of reading what's going on and internalizing once again what I know about the format so far. There's not a whole lot of that that actually seems complicated in this case anyways, but it's a good habit and I do think there's a little bit of information coded even in this one. So I'm just going to do that quick bit of tidying up so you can see how I like to lay things out when I'm trying to make sure that the code has a strong signal of what it actually what information it actually knows about the format. When I'm tidying up this code, what I'm mostly thinking about is how can I make it less intimidating for my future self when I'm trying to, again, understand what's going on here. So this is probably more so a personal taste thing than an objective thing, but what I've found really works for me is to opt for rearrangements that make the code flat, doesn't, so it doesn't have too many deeply nested concepts of when certain things do or don't happen. It, it instead gets phrased as just a series of operations that are mostly just in order. It makes the code kind of look like paragraphs with each paragraph explaining one important aspect of what has to happen in order to make the parser work. Like I said, this is probably not super objective. I'm not entirely sure about it. It might be somewhat universal, maybe try this way, but if this isn't really your thing, you know, you know experiment and figure out what makes code readable for you so that if you're the one who has to read it in the future, you can at least put it into that format consistently for yourself. And I think that that's a good st stopping point for today. So I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.